Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone. He's free. He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed. Sasquatch. Mountain Man. Reliving the rough-hewn adventures of mountain men past, Laramie Sasquatch Miller has trekked the jagged backbone of the continent. From the Northwest Territory to Oregon Country to the Buffalo Plains and Prairies of the Louisiana Purchase. On the way, he's incorporated the skills and wisdom of his fur hunting forebears and his native ancestors to sustain a vital vision of the old days in the modern world. With a single feathered shaft, he's brought down the biggest, most revered mammal on the continent. Now he reins his horse southward to the land that has seen six flags and the banner of the mountain men. The southern reach of the Sasquatch saga, the Republic of Texas. Night's dress and armor. And armor for Sasquatch is buckskin with thrums and outside-in fur. And for Sasquatch, it matters that he traps and prepares his own hides, using a sharp blade and infinite patience to ready a plume for trade. Well, now that I got the hide off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flush it all out, get all the flesh and membrane off that skin. The critical step is treating the hide to pull out as much fats and oils that can rot the skin. What I'm doing now is I'm going to finish flushing the whole thing. There's still little pieces of flesh here and there that I didn't get off the first time. With all the flesh gone, Sasquatch soaks the skin to make it pliable. While it's drying, I will flex that hide so that it's constantly stretching from the time it's wet until it dries. It's very, very time consuming. I might be able to wear this next year. When next year comes, Laramie will know where to go for expertise. No, I could get a needle and thread and do this myself, but I hope Papa John's got all the machinery and he's the master at this. He taught me everything I know. You son of a gun. That's about the truth. <laughs> Cut up to make buttons. I make my own. Cut them up. Looks good, huh? Like a new vest now. He's ready for a bunch more work. Tough as his grandpa, Sasquatch's clothes take a beating, and it's no secret where or why. Normal everyday wear and tear. Everyday wear and tear for a Sasquatch. <laughs> I learned how to do all this stuff from my grandpa. You know, nowadays I look at it and it's a lost art. If I ever come to know half of what he's forgotten, I'll be a very educated man. The trail of Sasquatch's education leads him south to the farthest chapter in the story of the mountain men, the Caliche Rock country of Texas. This was once forbidden Comanche land, but other tribes offered other threats. 
Nobody sleeps north. Legendary mountain man John Coulter stands naked on a riverbank, a captive of 800 Blackfeet who condemned him to death for the crime of trespass. Already, his trapping partner has been torn to pieces by a musket ball, arrow, tomahawk, and knife after killing one attacking brave with a futile shot. Now, the Blackfeet find amusement by striking Coulter in the face with his partner's innards as they palaver over a final verdict. Their decision is at last a perverse one. Coulter shall run for his life. Now here in Texas, Laramie Miller beds down in preparation for his hunt to come for a unique species of wild sheep. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. years ago, Texas was the center of the fur trade for the Spanish explorers. It was the first place any European saw the buffalo, which the Spaniards called cows. By the time of the mountain men in the 1830s, Texas was a rich source of beaver, otter, badger, bear, deer, buffalo, and wild cattle, plus jaguar. The Spaniards found wild sheep here too, but said the country was too rough to hunt. But that's not how Sasquatch sees it. That's pretty cool. We got about at 25 yards. Sasquatch Miller has made a jornada, a journey south to the beautiful but harsh country of the Texicans, where he means to hunt the wild sheep called the Audad with his hawking rifle. sheep trails, tons of sheep sign. A lot of it's older because in the summer they'll get under here. When it's real hot out, these bluffs will be shady, so they'll get under and bed underneath all these bluffs. Stay out of the wind and sun and rain and everything else. Pretty neat. Tough as the Texas terrain is to walk on, it's nothing compared to the running John Coulter had to do if he was going to escape death. For the Blackfeet, the fate of captive, naked John Coulter is sealed. But first, they'll partake in some sport. Let him run. We will chase him like a wolf chases a rabbit. Coulter runs till blood spouts from his nose. The swiftest of the warriors overtakes him and thrusts his lance. Coulter wheels, grasps the shaft, and breaks off the point, killing the brave with one stab. Renewed strength carries him the five miles to the river, where he dives in unseen and hides in a beaver lodge till dark. That night, he escapes with his life over the snowy summits of the mountain. There, these ought to have phenomenal eyesight. They're eight, nine hundred yards away and picked us out quick, and off they went. It's the same kind of terrain as hunting these desert bighorns. Real rocky bluffs, kind of rolling hills, really open. It makes it tough for spot and stalk. But that's what I'm all about. I love to spot and stalk. I don't like hunting out of stands or blinds or anything like that. I'm gonna go make it a level playing field. I'm gonna go spot and stalk, and I'm gonna try to get up close and personal with these animals on the ground. 
That's the Sasquatch way. How dead aren't the only game in Texas, and they are certainly far from the most destructive. As you can tell right here, these hogs have been coming under the fence, and if you look, I mean, they just tear stuff up. We're gonna set up some snares along this fence and hopefully try to catch us some hogs. Whether it's a coyote, bobcat, hogs, anything, you wanna to try to funnel them into a certain area. Just like any of the trapping you're doing, you're trying to focus an animal to go in that spot. Whether it be a snare, you're lining it with logs, or a beaver, putting sticks in the ground so that it funnels it right to where your trap is. And that's all that's acting as is a funnel. Sasquatch will return to check his hog snare, but now he wants to press on in his hunt for our dad. sheep right down here in the bottom. There's one really good ram with them. They're in a pretty tough spot to get to, so I think we're gonna back out of here. We're gonna let them continue to feed up that canyon and we might be able to circle around and get above them. You know, one of the things I absolutely love about Texas is it's a great place to hone your skills. If you wanna learn how to spot and stalk and wanna try to you know, sneak up on animals and stuff like that. Well, you've got tons of eyes looking at you and it's fairly open. So it's a great place to learn how to stop because you'll get opportunities all day long. Sticking to the high ground, Laramie hopes to spot the sheep before they spot him, giving him a chance to practice his stalking skills. As if out of nowhere, there's a gift sheep right in front of Laramie, only one shot away. Says Quoch Miller, it's been a long ride on the mountain man trail to the Texas Republic. And here, in this rocky, brutal land, he's just spotted a ram. In the wet and miserable weather, Laramie will try for a shot. Cap gun sound is as loud as a brass cannon to Laramie's frustrated hearing. As Sasquatch fumbles for a new percussion cap with hands that must feel like they're inside beaver mitts, Mr. Sheep avails himself of the opportunity to pull up stakes. See, there's a little bit of a circus. Pulled the trigger on the muzzleloader and it went pop. It's been raining, wet, humid, nasty, damp. That ram just walked over the edge. Once the ram makes the rim, it takes only a minute or two to get far across the canyon and out of hawking range, with its binocular eyes still fixed on Laramie.
Sasquatch is disappointed, but he knows this is just part of the way it is in the mountain man world, and he also knows he's about to be beat by darkness. set a hog snare against the possibility of taking nothing with his rifle, and now he checks it on his way in. And cut a hog. You look, you know, a lot of times there's a few different ways to set a snare on fences like this. You can either clip it to the bottom of the fence or you can tie it to a bunch of logs or whatever you want to tie it to. And this hog got over here before he died, but it did the trick. Progress, one hog down, a million to go. The bounty of Texas wildlife means that Sasquatch won't have to worry about going hungry, even if his muzzle loader fizzles out again. Sasquatch is ready to begin his stalk for wild sheep once more. You know, one of the biggest problems people make when they're trying to stock up on animals or just still hunt an area is side-to-side -side movement. You see an animal over there, one of the easiest ways for them to pick you out is the lateral movement. They can see really good side-to-side, -side, but their depth perception is a little off. So if you walk straight at them and keep something in between you, the two of you. They could be looking straight at you, but as long as you keep something between you and them, a lot of times you can walk right up on an animal. Go try it. Tell me how well it works. Well, I've got a bunch of sheep way down in the bottom of this canyon. I'm trying to figure out the best way to get to them. About the only way we can is we're going to have to circle all the way around this canyon and come up from the backside and try to sneak down above them. It's going to be a long hike. But there's a bunch of sheep down there. It's just going to be tough to get close enough to the old smoke pole. It dropped like a sack of rocks. In the Caliche Rock country of Texas, Laramie Sasquatch Miller faces the frustration of every mountain man when his rifle fails to fire in wet conditions. And he must watch his sheep get away. an oddad wallow and they might add just like an elk or you know whitetail whatever they might add will get down in there and they'll piss all over that area and then they'll roll in just another way of marking their territory and you know putting their scent out
all, Laramie has the sheep spotted. A big Aldad ram can carry 30-inch horns and top 300 pounds on the hoof, and scale a sheer rock face like a spider climbing a sticky web. If only Sasquatch has kept his powder dry so his hawking will make some smoke. <laughs> he dropped like a sack of rocks. That was a little bit of a hang fire, but it worked. <laughs> you know, the tricky thing about shooting some of these old guns, flint locks even worse, is you get a hang fire, you better, your follow through better be dang good. No, sir, job's not done till the fire gets to the powder. It's one thing to remember if you're ever shooting muzzleloader or flint lock. Hold on to your target for a little while. So we circled around and started coming down, got real close laid the hammer down, he dropped like a rock. Well, we definitely earned this out at. We had to walk seven, eight miles this morning, and this country is unforgiving. I hike the mountains all the time, and this is some of the toughest terrain to navigate just because your footing is horrible. We put our work in, it's all paid off. Yes, paid off in a rare trophy. Here on the farthest edge of the Mountain Man territory, Laramie Miller's found the curls of magnificent horns. The journey of Sasquatch is far from over. Thousands of miles on the trail now carry him back to the country he knows best, the country of the elk. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian. He survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. For Laramie Sasquatch Miller, this has been an epic voyage of discovery in a single season. Black powder has been a way to live off the land. But when it comes to tradition, especially with the terror king of the North American wilderness, disaster can hang on a small copper cap. Now the question is, which is faster, a charging grizzly or a bulky muzzle loader? A bear standing up looking could have turned bad real quick. <laughs> a dead grizzly does indeed concentrate the mind. But Laramie's quest for the dangerous game of the mountain men didn't end there. 'Tooth and Claw have not been the only threat, as Sasquatch faced white death on his way to making his winter meat. Laramie has packed the trapper's basket. And as he trekked across the historic names on the old maps, he's lived by a code of ethics that has added a special complexity and meaning to the course of his journey. Tatanka is the name from Laramie's own native heritage for the most revered animal in all the West. And for Laramie, there's only one true way to hunt this icon.
for Laramie, the arc of his quest now carries him back to the bedrock of his life, the great shining mountains and the lone hunt for the one animal that most made him what he is, the American elk or wapiti. Laramie Miller has the sound of the elk's bugle and the sight of its hoof prints to carry him into the mountains. The subtle and sophisticated art of calling elk includes the cow whistle. It's a very low success rate. We get so much rain that you can't go sit on one water hole and expect to kill you know, a decent bull or an elk because they travel so much. They travel 10, 12 miles in one night. If you can kill an elk with a bow in public land Colorado, you've done something. For the mountain men who preceded Laramie, these lands were all public, open, and free. But they were not all created equal. And even the mountain men had to hunt hard to discover the finest areas. The mountain big game is not limited to elk. This young ram has more peaks to climb. Laramie's calling sounds irresistible to at least one bull. Right there, that's what I live for. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. The marrow of Laramie Miller's bones is mountains like these. Calling and hunting elk are in his blood, even when victory goes to the Wapiti. Way the hell up on a mountainside, middle of nowhere, chasing Rocky Mountain elk. One bull may have bolted, but Laramie's calling draws the attention of another. But it's deer and not elk that put in an appearance. For the mountain men, a dog could be as vital as a horse, sometimes in extreme ways. All hope of finding elk vanishes, and cruel famishment beckons mountain men William Sublet and Black Harris. As they snowshoe 500 miles through blinding blizzards, their loyal wolf dog carries a 50-pound pack of jerky. But the Indian dog's pack is torn, and all the jerky is lost. In seeming amends, the dog catches a scrawny hare, but the men are ultimately reduced to eating raw raven. 
The failing dog can barely keep up on the marches, and now beside a feeble campfire, three gaunt figures unable to travel farther face starvation. Without elk, two of them will have to look to the third for desperately needed nourishment. A cow will make different calls, and each sound and each pitch relates to how she's feeling at that time. You know, you got call to her calf, you've got cow calls to other cows, you've got cow estrus calls. Your estrus calls are when the cows are in heat, they're ready to be bred, and that's what really gets them bulls fired up. And for the most part, they're longer and drawn out, have a lot more energy in them. You know, real kind of long, drawn out, higher pitched. If you got a bull that's getting antsy, and you want to calm him down, a good way to calm him down is some cow-calf calls, you know, to make him more willing to come in for the most part. That'll be... You know, just real law, soft and low-key. And the better you know the different sounds the elk make, the more success you're going to have. I was real fortunate. I was raised up in a hunting family. I've been hunting elk my entire life. My uncle owned an outfitting business, distributed VHSs back in the 70s and 80s. My grandpa's been hunting his whole life. My dad guided for my uncle. I've been lucky to learn from some of the best. By the time I was a young man, I was already educated in elk better than anybody that could have been out there 20 years. For Laramie, the mountain man way is simply part of an old family tradition. Responds. It's right there, that's what I live for. In the mountain wilderness, Laramie Sasquatch Miller is taking the ultimate test. Hunting elk with bow and arrow on public land is as extreme and challenging as it gets. He just bugled again up here. See if he won't calm down and bugle again and maybe go after him again. In camp, Laramie has wild Barbary sheep meat to fix with potatoes and wild onions to give him strength to hunt elk. The Republic of Texas is the far end of the Mountain Man Trail and where Laramie ventured to hunt out at. That's pretty cool. We got out at 25 yards. Just a bunch of youths and kids, though. Nothing more than dark. Still cool. The Caliche rock trails were once trod by the boots of Spanish conquistadors. Then, mountain men bent on finding everything from badger to jaguar. For Laramie, the quest was this large wild ram dressed in fringes of long hair. pounds on the hoof and able to scale rock faces sheer as skyscraper windows. Now, the journey spirals back to the heart of the game for Laramie Miller. Luckily, for all concerned, Laramie has sufficient sheep meat for the moment. Black Harris tells starving William Sublet that their wolf dog must die. Shuddering in the frozen night, a freezing sublet weakly concurs. Sensing its fate, the dog flashes its fierce yellow eyes and bares its fangs as Harris approaches. But the dog also is too weak to stand, and its growl becomes a pitiful howl as the first blow of the tomahawk descends. 
The hatchet head then flies off the handle. A wretched sublet must get up to assist in the assassination, stabbing the dog with his knife. The dog is thrown on the embers of the fire, but it's not dead and kicks itself off. At last, the terrible deed is done and the dog roasted, the mountain men staving off death with their cruel victuals. See? Got a bull that just headed into the timber up here. I think I'm gonna drop back down and go down the valley so that I can get the wind right and come up blowing. This is for mountain goats, not Sasquatches. This looks like a good little transition area. They're transitioning from their feeding to their bedding area. I'm gonna let out a bugle and see if I can't get a response. Stop, you know, in places I think the elk are going to be hanging out at that time of day and either bugle or cow call and see if I can't get a reaction so I'm not bumping elk and walking into elk. Got a bull bugling up the canyon at us. The wind's still a little shifty, so I'm hesitant to move in on it. It's as if time, going back across the centuries to the old mountain men, has drawn to a halt. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. The wild and free summits of the Rocky Mountains. For Laramie Sasquatch Miller, it's the heart and soul of the way he takes on life. An elk moving right there. See him? The final ascent begins. <coughs> it's an elk Laramie could take, but it's a bull with more useful years ahead of it the sacred tenet of the Native American, that the land, the sky, the water and the game can't be ours to attach deeds to. At best, we may only be stewards and servants. You see the elk have been traveling through here like crazy. There's game trails everywhere, a lot of fresh tracks and sign, a lot of fresh rubs. There's a big meadow up at the end, up above Timberline. I think we're gonna come up here and sit and wait for them to come back and feed. Easiest way to tell the difference between a cow and a bull track. A cow's shoulders will be more narrow than her hips. She gives birth to calves, so it's kind of natural. A bull's going to be carrying horns to his shoulder because his shoulder's going to be wider than his hips. A cow's going to be the opposite. Her shoulder's going to be narrower than her hips. And with age, the older the cow, the more definite that you can tell in their track. You can tell right there that's a really young cow. Her hips are just a little bit wider than her shoulders are. Not much, but just a little.
look right here, you can tell there's an elk bed bedded down sometime fairly recently. So uh, we gotta go real slow. We're in their bedding area. I usually don't like to disturb their bedding area, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. The backbone of the continent. The long trail that winds across land and time. A lifetime in a season. In the taste of the fall wind, Laramie senses the final goal of his journey. receives an answer. There's more than one bull calling back. and knock an arrow. let fly in the woods and there is one man and one elk to hear it. Well, we got this bull to bugle up the canyon first thing this morning. We worked our way up onto this bench and couldn't get him to bugle. And finally, we get up on this bench and got him to respond to us again. And he was calling, but he wasn't real fired up. And so I started chuckling at him and the whole canyon erupted. <laughs> Right there, that's what I look for. To live for a life in the wild, a life of freedom, to follow the tracks of the mountain men, that is the Sasquatch way. Something hunts these mountains. Shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian. He survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone. He's free. He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed. Sasquatch. Mountain Man. Laramie Sasquatch Miller set out to trek the trace of his mountain men forebears, to seek the way of life sought by the enterprising young men of centuries past who were bound to set their eyes on the peaks of the shining mountains. He's seen white death and risen to tell the thrilling tale. I live in the middle of nowhere in the Rocky Mountains. You look around, this is my home. I was born and raised in the mountains. 
brought up living off the land, learning all the ways of Mother Nature. Oh. Horse is my best friend. I'm a sucker for a challenge. You could drop me off 100 miles from civilization and I'd be tickled pink. I've got the same instincts and the same blood as 100 years ago. Like they say on old Jeremiah Johnson, Rocky Mountains is the marrow of the world. For a class of young men of restless disposition, the life in the 1820s and 1830s in the East lacked true savor. They could bust Sahn or Cooper a barrel, but for them that was no way to live. They heard of the Far West and legends of Oli from the Grizzly, the Elk or Wapiti, Tatonka the Buffalo, and especially the Beaver, Brown Gold. They gathered their trappings of rifle, hatchet, knife, bedroll, and sound horse and headed to where the setting sun lit the snow-saddled summits. Even if it meant never seeing home again, they were determined to break trail to the undiscovered lands of the Rockies and beyond. It's the same spirit that informs the life today of Laramie Miller. For Laramie, his saga of the mountain man's life along the backbone of the continent begins in the extreme northwest. We're in Sasquatch country. We're in the farthest northwest corner of British Columbia. We're after huge Canadian moose, biggest in the world. Four out of the top five in the record book have all come from around here. That's what we're after. Laramie's cow calling draws the attention of the competition. There's a bull grunting right over here. Real little bull, we don't want him, but it's pretty neat to watch him. Time to go find Big Boy Bullwinkle. To call in bull moose, Laramie needs a chorus of inviting and challenging sounds. deer in the world with antler palms the size of tabletops. About a high 57, 58 inch bull. I'm tickled to death. Fresh moose meat on the fire. But in the darkness comes a hunger on four clawed paws, prepared to take whatever it needs. Get out of here. Ah. Laramie Miller's skill set, gathered from the knowledge of the mountain men and Native Americans, can in even the small ways spell the difference between life and death. See, if you look in there, there's a little piece of meat attached to the top of the trigger. What's going to happen is that mouse or pack rat or squirrel is going to come around here. He's going to see that and say, oh, there's dinner. He's going to go in there to grab it, and it's going to trip that trigger. The branch is going to swing back, pull this out from underneath, and it's going to squish him. Voila! This would be a great place for them bears to stay out of the rain. They got all kinds of bears. That's what these bears are eating. Soap berry. It's bitter. They're very bitter. Knowing all that the land can provide may mark the route to survival, especially in the time of white death. Up here, white is not the only color that death can come in. It's only about 40 yards. There, that's a good old Colorado cat. Sasquatch is brought to you by 
Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. In the extreme northwest of mountain man country, Laramie Miller takes the largest of all the world's deer with his hawk and gun. Up here, the shades of death go beyond white. That's exactly what you want right there. It's about four yards. It's a bow hunter's dream if it was a good boar. <laughs> Too bad it's a sow. From one of the biggest animals to shamble on the earth, Laramie celebrates the capture of one of the smallest. <laughs> what do we got here? We got a mud seasoned red squirrel. It's going to be red squirrel pancakes tonight. For Laramie, even in the meat of one squirrel is the taste of all the wild. country. Spotted the big bear that's been playing Houdini with us here the last week. The Sasquatch way is the challenge of a single shot muzzle loader. One shot, one misfire. The only thing lying in front of a deadly confrontation is a fresh copper cap. Now, get ready. It may not be done. Powder, ball, cap and keep your nerve. Crazy That ain't a rush, there ain't nothing. It's been raining like a son of a gun here, though. I'm trying to get this bear. No black powder. Pulled the trigger and went pop. The bear heard it and standing up looking, could have turned bad real quick. <laughs> the monarch of the mountain. But the trail goes on from there to the heart of the mountain man's life, to where the beaver call from the ponds and streams, take me, take me. <laughs> Hundreds of years of trapping skills are now brought to bear. Awesome. These conor bear traps are instant death. Look at that. That's trapping at its finest. Look at them chompers. Imagine that latching onto your leg. Wouldn't feel too good. But Laramie's trap sets take even more elusive and more impressive game. I can see it from here. We got something. And that something is a fisher. Look at that thing. You can see he's been eating, look at that, porcupine quail. They're one of the only animals that'll actually eat a porcupine. The only other thing I know of is a mountain lion. Things are pretty. It's like a baby wolverine on steroids. That is cool. In the high country, the snows have come. And with the snows, the time to hunt Wapiti, the elk. Fresh 
elk sign is. You taste it. <laughs> and if it's chewy or slimy, then you know it's fairly fresh. File that under the category of don't try this at home. No, Laramie doesn't really recommend tasting elk droppings. He's about 80 yards and don't even know we're here. I'm gonna whistle and hopefully he'll stand up. There, that's a good old Colorado cat. Laramie's trail has led to moose. In the realm of the grizzly, he's stared into the face of death. Now with fresh snow blanketing the ground, he means to take the lordliest of the deer, the American elk. He's about 80 yards and don't even know we're here. I'm gonna whistle and hopefully he'll stand up. But I am tickled to death, and he is going to eat wonderful. It's been one of those hunts. We got all the snow and the weather, and we had to work a little bit for this guy, but it finally all panned out. Laramie accepts the same risks that his mountain men forefathers did. Along with white death, there is the constant threat of carnivores. We got the dogs that struck up the track over here. They're heading down into this nasty canyon. People will think, you know, lion hunting's easy. You go out there and you run with dogs and you train them and that's it. That ain't even close to the story. And we've been riding through brush all morning, just the legs are all tore up. It's fun, I love it, but it's far from easy. We got the dogs right down here, waiting to see if they can tree that lion. If not, we're gonna be going through some more brush. <laughs> it's a brutal march through thick brush, listening for the echoes of the hound's howls. Hear that? It's music to my ears. Before Laramie can loose an arrow, the big cat jumps the tree, the frenzied dogs in pursuit. Now we gotta walk even more. A feathered shaft flies true. Ah! 
That's what I'm talking about right there. That's a good old Colorado cat. Look at them things. How'd you like to get chomped on by those? You look at this Tom, you can tell he's been fighting like crazy. He's got scars all over his head and his ears. Got a big chunk missing. Got a bunch of bald spots. There's another good Tom in here running around that these boys have been going at it. For Laramie, it's another fur to flesh and the favorite meat of the mountain men, fresh mountain lion. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. Against the vistas of the shining mountains, Laramie Miller has set his feet along the trail of his mountain men and Native American forebearers, carving out a way of life with Hawken and Longbow. Now comes the final chapter, the gilt-edged page of the mountain man's journal, The Hunt for Tatanka the Buffalo. For the Native American, the source of all wealth and survival. For Laramie Miller, the most revered of all the game of the plains. traditional way. In terms of numbers and grandeur, no animal ever matched the buffalo. Couldn't quite get close enough to them with the rope. They got real itchy, so I'm going to try a different scenario. Hopefully they don't charge. The greatest threat posed by the buffalo comes from cows with calves. Nothing will dissuade them from protecting their young. That cow really doesn't like me being here. She thinks I'm a threat to her calves. Cows are probably twice as dangerous as a bull because there's a couple calves in there. So uh, kind of a tricky situation. As the cow turns away, Laramie continues to coyote crawl into longbow range of the herd bull. Thousands of years of hunting tradition are now drawn into a taut bowstring. Holy cow. I'll tell you what, them are some tough critters right there. Look at that thing. Can you imagine back in the day, them Indians, they'd probably kill a dozen or more buffalo in one hunt. I feel sorry for them. That's a lot of work. You got 1,800 pounds right here, and they used every single piece. And for Laramie, it has been about using every piece, every last scrap of life, about breaking trail to the far lands to see what lies beyond the tall peaks. On his journey, he's faced the trials of prairies and forests, valleys and streams, 